What's going on, everybody? You're tuned into another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Leezy the Gifted. I want to jump straight into it. What we're going to be talking about today is email marketing for musicians. Now, if you stay till the end of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity to learn how you can implement email marketing into your music brand directly. All right, but stay till the end. I'll give you that opportunity. So, First things first, I think it would really help for us just to talk about different types of traffic, right? In our last episode, we talked about sales funnels and we talked about how traffic is just basically like everybody on the internet that's going to all these different types of places and stuff like that. So there's different types of traffic, right? There's traffic, um, you know, it's kind of crazy. I'm just gonna quick run through traffic and not give like a whole detailed thing, but there's three types of traffic. Learned all of this from Russell Brunson, by the way. I don't want anyone to think I invented this or that I'm super cool for exposing you to brand new information. I learned this from someone else. Just wanna try to help you translate it as a musician. So, there's three types of traffic. Number one, there's traffic that you control. There's traffic that you earn, and then there's traffic that you own. Very easy to think. Control, ads. Earn, I'll just say free exposure. Own is email list. Email or SMS. SMS means text message marketing. So we're literally only going to talk about this one today, own, okay? We are only gonna talk about email marketing because the control, the paid ads, and the exposure one, those are whole other conversations. And the way I like to do things, the way I like to think about things is When it comes to marketing, I like to think about the end goal in mind. The end goal is not to run paid ads. The end goal is not to just get a bunch of exposure. The end goal is to control your traffic, okay? Because here's the way it works. Instagram, for example, Instagram super popular platform. YouTube, Facebook, whoever owns those companies are the ones who controls what's going on on those platforms. You don't control that. So if you wanna make money with your music, you're gonna be able to build an audience on Instagram, but you're not going, you, you make money from sending people, I mean, I think what you do is you make money from sending people emails, and then they buy something off your email. So the idea is we wanna get people off of those platforms, Instagram, YouTube, and all that, onto our email list. That's what we wanna do. So, Email marketing, right? I think the other great thing to look into is copywriting, which I'll write that down. I always like to specify the W because there's also copyright, like R-I-G-H, which is like ownership of something. Copywriting with a W is basically using words to sell stuff. And that has a lot to do with email marketing because emails are words. So you know, I basically just explained why do we want to grow an email list and I just explained like this is kind of the art of using words to actually get people to buy stuff and take actions, right? I'm using words right now on this video but I mean the written word. That's what this is. Right, like W-R-I, writing. So this is using the written word to get people to buy or take whatever action, okay? So, and there's different like There's different email providers. You could go to like MailChimp or Aweber or Constant Contact. Uh, I can't think of any others, but those are the three. What's another one? Those are the three that I know of. I use Aweber personally, but like that stuff is super easy to go understand. You could go watch so many other YouTube videos on like what's the best, like how do I set this up? like. It's not really worth your time for me to explain to you how to set up an account with an email provider. It's simple, you set up an account. But um, I will say, there's a lot of different types of email campaigns that you can run, but you can think of it like we can, right now we can break it up into two different types. So 
Number one, there's like an automated sequence. So I'll, I'll call it sequence. There's sequences, and then there's broadcasts. Okay, so let me just make this line straight. So sequences are like a string of emails, you know, three, four, five days, 10 days, 30 days even. I don't know who runs 30 day campaigns. I know there's people, but it's automatic. So, you know, we'll say sequence, you know, sequence, multiple days, um, it's automatic, right? Generally, you know, generally, uh, generally it's, it's, it's different structure than a broadcast. I'll just say it's, it's, it's just structured a little bit differently. It's stretching out a story, you know, I'll just say stretching out your story. You know, it's stretching out your story over a little bit longer period of time. A broadcast is a one-off email. A broadcast is just like, you're just like, oh, I have this thought, I wanna send it to people. If you're on my email list, and you're watching this because you were on my email list, you know what a broadcast is because you probably got here through a broadcast email. It's just a one-off. There is storytelling, but it's within that one email rather than sequences are multi-days where you're telling a story over that many days and it's usually tied, sequences are usually multiple emails tied to one offer. I could write that in here. Tied to one offer. Right? Broadcasts also have an offer in each email, right? But so it's a different, it's a different, um, it's just, it's just different. It's gonna, it's gonna have a different style of how you put it in there, right? So really quick, when it comes to sequences, right? Let's, let's talk about sequences. Basically, when you get someone to sign up for your email list, what you should have is when they sign up, automatically they're gonna be sent emails for multiple days in a row. So what I have, like I'll you know, be transparent, I don't care. If you go to giftedstarterpack.com, you can get 15 free beats. No strings attached, it really is 15 free beats. I'm not like jipping anybody. You go get 15 free beats. When you sign up, I think like 10 minutes after you sign up, it's something like takes like 10 or 15 minutes, you receive an email with the link to those beats, but I also have a message for you. You're also automatically added to my email list and then the next four days, I, I have emails automatically sent to you. That's how, email, that's how an email sequence works. You sign up for somebody's list and then they should be pitching you emails right after that. Does that make sense? You should have, I mean, I would recommend having at least a five to seven day thing. I mean, I'm not an expert. I just think you should have more than just one email delivering your, that message that they signed up for. You should also have like the next four, five, six, seven days ready to like send them more emails and keep them warm. And yes, days in a row. Um, and then broadcasts or emails that you send anybody after they finish that welcome sequence. That's basically, that's kind of the overall framework of how you could get, you know, email marketing, how you start. Now, obviously the copy, right, the words are going to be different for each one of these, right? And you gotta also know, you're not gonna send a, bro like I have, I have both of these going on because I have people added to my email list every day that are new that are getting this. But I'm also sending new broadcast emails almost every day as well. I send broadcast emails about four to five days a week. I'm not sending those broadcast emails to people who are in the middle of my welcome sequence. I, I, that's stupid, because then they're gonna get two emails from me and they're unrelated and it's gonna be confusing. So I make sure to filter out whoever I send my broadcast to is people who finished my welcome sequence. I hope that makes sense. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the best way to describe email marketing and how you can use it for musicians, right? Um, you know, I'm gonna just erase this really quick, but because I wanna kind of translate what can you do for, you know, for musicians. So what you can do as a musician is, you know, I like to think of this, why am I not focused on Spotify as much anymore? I'm not focused on playlists, I'm not focused on hell of clout and views, what I'm focused on is that direct get people's emails because Instead of going, trying to go from Spotify to email, 
Meaning, instead of trying to go from, somebody heard me on Spotify, I wanna get them on my email list. This isn't happening. You can't track people on Spotify. You can't tag them. You can't do a Facebook pixel. You can't reach out to them. They might not even follow you on Instagram at the very least. They might not even. They, they're on Spotify. They'd have to go search you out, which, which can happen. But even when they're on your Instagram, that doesn't mean they're on your email list. And we already talked about the cons of just having an Instagram following and no email list. So instead of going from Spotify to email list, what we want to do is we're going to go from, well, here's what we're really what we're going to do. We're going to go from, like our strategy is we're going to go from music video and then I'm going to put in parentheses, the best way to get people on there is Facebook ads. Then we're going to get them on the email list. Probably have a retargeting ad, but that's too advanced right now. Then we're going to Spotify, right? Then we're going to Spotify. By the way, this shouldn't even be your holy grail, by the way. Just getting listeners on Spotify doesn't do anything for you. Really, what we should be doing is this. We should be trying to get money. You should be trying to sell people stuff. Why not? You should be trying or send them your, you can send them music. You can send them music videos. You don't have to sell and pitch on every single email, but you want to make a living as a musician, right? Well, then you got to sell them something and that can be merch, digital downloads, behind the scenes video. I mean, whatever it is, you know, you, you, you will talk about other stuff you can sell as a musician another time, but this is the process that we want to try to go to, to actually grow as a musician. Right? And I'll be honest with you guys. This, I've got down. This, I understand. And I'll, I'm gonna be transparent with you. From here to here, this gap, this, if you, oh, sorry. I'm so used to dollar signs, that's why. If we figure this out, from how do you get them from a music video to your email list? Once they're on your email list, you're gonna be okay. If you know how to use write copy. If you know how to write copy, which I don't think anybody watching this does because how would you know? I'm still learning a lot about how to write copy, but once you've got them on your email list, you're in a really, you're in a much better position than before. Much better. The fact that that person was on your website, gave you their name and gave you their email and clicked submit, Dude, that is a huge, you got them to do a lot of action with their fingers and their brain. Clicking play and doing this. You see literally there's a physical difference in what's going on. You're getting people to take more physical action just to get them on your email list. That's a big deal. You're in a better position than if they stumble across your song on a Spotify playlist. So it's pointless to focus on that. And you're, if, you're, if they're on your email list, you're one email away from getting money from them. When you're when they're on Spotify, you've got okay, cool, they found you on Spotify. Now they need to get you on Instagram. Now they need to get on your email list. Now they need to buy. You're actually 3 steps away as opposed to on your email list is 1 step away. So, here's what I recommend to you. We're about to be into 2021. Your goal for 2021 needs to be how do I grow my email list and set that number what do I do to grow my email list as a musician? Now, if you're a music producer, I can definitely help you with that. I've actually grown my music producer email list to over 1,500 subscribers and it's growing every single day. Like I'm getting at least, I'm getting between 25 and 30 new subscribers every week. It ain't nothing to build a million dollar business on, but it's a real place that I'm at that is super easy for me and I'm even breaking even from my sales funnel right now. So if you're a music producer and you wanna learn how to get your first 1,000 email subscribers, what I recommend you do is click below and book a 15 minute call with me. We can set that up and I can give you specialized help for how to actually build your email list and start actually generating revenue. If you're a musician, like an artist, same exact thing, I can help you do the same thing. I have a manager that I'm partnering up with to do that. We could both jump in and help you with that. Book that 15 minute call. Either way, if you're looking to build an email list, all right? If you enjoyed the episode, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification. If you're listening to the podcast, leave a rating, leave a review, subscribe to the pod, share with a friend, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Peace.